Hello friends, this is Sanjeev Kaushik and welcome to my channel Methodical Trades. In this video, I'm going to talk about trading on multiple time frames. Long time ago, I released a video on the different styles of trading where I spoke about the size of a certain candle, be it daily, weekly, 10 minute, 15 minute. And based on that, how long should one look to keep their position open? So for example, if you're trading on daily chart, then you should look to keep your position open for say, one month to three months if your target hasn't arrived and also the stop loss is not hit. So I'll make sure that the link to that video should be flashing right now on the corner of the screen so that you go ahead and watch that video as well. That video and this video is slightly connected. It's best if you already know about those rules when it comes to trading on different time periods. Because once you would know about those, grasping what I'm about to say in this video will be much easier. Now, talking about different time frames is not a small topic in itself. There are certain logics behind it, and there are also certain areas where the logic is a little more fuzzy, so you are at a bit of a liberty to choose your own discretion as well. So this topic is divided into three videos. This is the first video of the series, and in the next two videos, I'll be covering different topics related to the same area that is different time frames. Now, who defines time frames? Many people stay confused when it comes to using different time frames. In fact, they don't even know why they are switching between the time frames. Just because they might have heard from somewhere else that if you are trading on any time frame, then you should look one level up and one level down and then only take your decisions. I would say, if you don't know what you're doing, then there's absolutely no point in switching between different time frames. You're better off just sticking with your usual time frames and you'll be just fine. There is no guarantee that switching between different time frames will help you. As Warren Buffett said, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Right? So if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, then chances are the benefits of switching between the time frames for you would almost be negligible. In fact, you might end up taking on wrong trades if you did that, especially if you didn't know why you did that, right? Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about two things. Defining one level up and one level down, right? They say you should switch, but then how exactly should you define your one level up? If I am trading on one hour chart, then what is my one level up? Is it two hour, three hour, four hour chart? And similarly, What's my one level down? Is it 30 minute chart, 15 minute chart, 10 minute chart, 45 minute charts, right? So there has to be logic behind defining what's my one level up and one level down. And number two, I'll talk about the scenarios where switching to the higher time frames makes sense. Right, so this is what I'm going to cover in this video. In next video, I'll talk about the scenarios where switching to lower time frames help for both trading as well as investing. And in the third video, I'm going to talk about how different indicators dance as per the switching between different time frames, right? So this is how this entire series would be divided into three videos. Now, let's get started. And I want to start with defining one level up and one level down. In this logic, a bit of a math is involved. You see, if I'm trading on say daily chart, and then if I want to go one level up, the general convention is that when you have to go one level up from daily, you usually go to weekly chart. But then why? Why not two days? Why not three days? So let's say you go to the weekly chart. What it means is essentially you are going from one daily candle to five daily candles, right? So one week constitutes five trading sessions. So the ratio in this case would be one is to five for you, right? So from your usual time frame. If you're maintaining a ratio of one is to five on the upside, then you should also maintain the ratio of one is to five on the downside. What that means is if I'm going to switch to weekly, then what should be my intraday time frame or one level down time frame? In this case, my one level down time frame would be hourly. How? Usually, excluding the pre market and post market session timings, a session lasts about six and a half hours. In some countries, it's seven, seven and a half. But if I take example of US, then the trading session lasts for six and a half hours, excluding the pre and post market timings. 9.32, 4 p.m. is the regular trading hours. 
Now, of course, if you have to go with early, then you can't have a proper breakup. That is the number of hours would be six and a half. So your ratio becomes one is to 6.5 from lower to up. And then from daily to weekly, it's one is to five. So there's not much of a difference between the two, right? So the idea is that your one level up and one level two should be almost similar. I'm not saying that it has to be exact. If you want exactly, then you will have to do a little bit of calculation on how your lower side should be assigned in terms of how many minutes should be there. I think it has to be 65 minutes or so to have the ratio as one is to five, right? So it has to be similar. It doesn't have to be precisely same. But the logic still applies regardless of which time frame you're trading on, right? Similarly, if you trade on hourly chart, let's say, then your one level up, if it's daily, which is one is to 6.5, then if you go down to maintain the same ratio, then you will be trading on 10 minutes chart, right? So you understand the logic and you can't just skip levels. Let's say you trade on hourly chart. Now you just can't start looking at weekly chart because you want to take a look at the bigger picture. No, you would never be able to trade profitably if this is what you have been doing or this is what you're planning to do in future. There has to be a logic behind why you're switching between the time frames, and the time frames should have proper ratios assigned. So even before you're switching, you should know what time frames you'll be switching in. And of course, you should always decide what is going to be your usual time frame. Even for your usual trading, without switching between the time frames, you can't just keep looking at hourly chart, daily chart, four hour chart, weekly chart, and then accordingly take multiple trades according to it. No, you have to have some kind of perfection in one time frame before you choose to move on to another time frame. And you should have, of course, a very good reason for doing so. And the reason doesn't always have to be market associated. It has to also be associated with your availability to be able to take those trades, to be able to manage those trades and how often you want to track those trades, right? Now, this is the logic behind going one level up and one level down. Another logic is that the higher time frame trend usually prevails. So if a stock has been in an uptrend on weekly chart, then it may show minor corrections on daily chart, but overall the trend would still be considered upwards unless it is negated in the same higher time frames. that is on the weekly. If it has to show weakness, if the existing trend has to be extinguished, then the first breakdown should be appearing on weekly. Unless you don't get that breakdown on weekly, the existing trend would be considered to be continuing, right? And that's why when people switch to higher time frames, they want to see the broader trend. That's one of the reasons why they switch. However, there's a caveat here. And the caveat is, as your time frame comes down, the disconnect between the level down and the usual time frame increases. What does it mean? It means, let's say you are trading on hourly chart all the time, that's your usual time frame, and then you come down to 10 minutes as one level down, right? Firstly, there has to be logic why you're coming down to 10 minutes, but this is a topic for the second video. Let's say you did come down. So, it will not be uncommon for you to see that there's a stark difference between the trend on hourly chart and the trend on 10 minutes chart. And if let's say you came down from one hour, 10 minutes to 30 minutes and three minutes or 30 minutes and five minutes breakdown, then you will see the difference even more higher. However, as you increase the overall time frame, let's say you go from these minutes or hours to daily and weekly, and you will see that there's a much better connection between daily chart and weekly chart. Why? Because what's happening is you're giving a lot of time for the markets to decide where they want to go. The shorter your time frame, the more volatility, the more noise would be there, the more emotions would be involved, and therefore it would be hard to establish the exact trend. However, if you give the counter a longer time frame, daily and weekly, you will find the connection between the two, the correlation between the two as much stronger. About 80 to 90% of the times, you will find that the broader trend that is being exhibited on weekly is also shown on daily. And I'm going to actually talk about this topic in a bit more detail as we move forward in this video. But please understand one thing, the larger your time frames, 
the more connection, the more correlation would be there. The smaller, the more uncorrelated moves can be seen in the same counter between different time frames. Now I want to talk about the logic behind switching to the longer time frame or one level up and in what scenarios should we consider doing it. And I want to take an example of XLC. So what you're looking at right now is the daily chart, but I want to start off with weekly chart. And by the way, I also covered XLC in one of my other videos where I covered all the sectors within S&P 500. S&P 500 is broken down into 11 sectors. And I created a video where I spoke about how I look at their charts and how I assess whether the US market is overall fine or not, or how the economy is doing. So I'll make sure that the link to that video should be flashing right now on the corner of the screen. So go ahead and check out. You will have a much better idea about how to assess the health of the stock market and US economy by looking at all those charts. And hopefully you can also start doing it in future. So there I spoke about this inverted head and shoulder that is forming on XLC on a weekly chart. You see, this is one shoulder. This is the head. This is another shoulder. And if you were to draw a neckline, you can say that the breakout has already happened on weekly chart. And as I said earlier, that the trend in the bigger time frame usually prevails. Now, if I switch to daily chart, you'll see that the right way of drawing the neckline is slightly different. So let me remove this one. And here, the neckline has to be drawn by connecting the closes of the candles, which means this neckline is still not broken on daily, but it's already broken on weekly, right? So essentially, the point I'm trying to make here is that you wouldn't find much of a disconnect between the daily chart and the weekly chart, but there's a caveat and hear me out very, very closely because this is a very important point. You see, it depends upon what kind of trading you're doing. If you have to switch between daily and weekly here, I've shown you a pattern, right? And this pattern has taken very, very long in formation, right? It started from here in June 2022, even on daily chart, because I'm looking at daily candles doesn't mean that my view is smaller. This pattern formed in almost eight, nine months, right? So you see the connection here. Even if I switch to weekly, I'm taking into consideration almost as many candles, right? However, if I trade on daily candle, but the way I trade is different, then everything changes. Let's take an example. And this is a daily candle. And let's say I trade based on the daily candle, right? I trade based on a candle, not on the basis of pattern because pattern formation takes a lot of time. It can take years, not even months, right? So here, if I'm purely trading based on Let's say this big red candle that formed here at the top, and this is a bearish engulfing candle, right? And I actually created a video where I speak about how you can trade by just looking at candles. It's a perfect strategy for those who are time poor, especially those who have, let's say, regular jobs or regular businesses who can barely spare, say, one hour a day in trading. So I'll make sure that the link to that video should be flashing right now on the corner of the screen. You can go ahead and watch it. Wonderful strategies, right? So as per that strategy that I covered, my view is not very long. I only want to be in this trade for three to five days. That's it, no more. Three to five days doesn't even constitute one week, right? And here, if I'm looking at one candle, essentially I'm looking at six and a half hours, not a very big time frame, right? So my time frame on the basis of which my signal is generated and my time frame on the basis of which I would be exiting this particular position is even less than one week, right? I'm not going to stay more than three to five days. And my signal was generated based on six and a half hours. That's it. So if I am only looking at this particular candle to take my position, then I don't have to look at my weekly chart. Please understand. But if my view is that this pattern formed, then I would look at the higher time frame as well. And 
once you would be looking at let's say a lot of charts switching between different time frames you would always have a bit of an idea if i would switch to a higher time frame most likely this is how the chart should be looking like right so you would have a very good idea already right so this is what i want you to understand in terms of the difference between the two it's not just simply saying that if you're trading on daily chart you should also switch to weekly chart to look at it no what's the purpose why are you doing it right sometimes say about 10 to 15 percent times you'll see a disconnect between a weekly chart and a daily chart you could be seeing a pattern breakout but on a daily chart let's say the stock is forming some kind of a different pattern where let's say it could be a double top or it could be rounding bottom or it can be any kind of a pattern which is a sign that the existing trend is going to extinguish and the stock may drop 10 to 15 percent of the times you would find these kind of scenarios but nobody is putting a gun on your head asking you to take that particular trade you see discretion is not always a liability when it comes to stock markets so you can use your discretion and you can say i'm confused there's a disconnect between the weekly trend and the daily trend so i don't want to take the position so you understand where you are going to need the switch to the higher level it will only confirm what you're trying to do right and of course sometimes you would get entry on the basis of weekly earlier and sometimes you will get the entry on the basis of daily earlier right and we will talk about the entries and exits in much more detail in the second video of the series right for example if you were looking at weekly then you already have your entry signal generated here about uh, eight nine sessions ago now one last point here when i am looking at this pattern here my view is also longer duration i should be willing to keep this position open for at least three months that itself means 12 weeks right so it's not just about the entry part it's also about the exit part you can't be trading on daily and exiting the next day unless of course you have a solid reason to do that right so this is all that i wanted to cover in this particular video i hope now you're much more clear in how you can define your up level and your down level and also how if you have to switch to the one level up and what scenarios does it make sense for us to do it Thanks a lot for being with me. I'll see you soon in the second video of this series.